restore to the cloud, <laughs> I guess. Okay, well, we're, we're recording now. And, and let me get us started by sharing the screen. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's on the wrong, let's see. Oh, I can't, there. All right. Well, Jane, thank you for being here. You, you, get, you get the prize. You've been to every one of them, haven't you? <laughs> and this, this is the last one, and it's all been building the, to this. And William and I were just reflecting earlier um, that in a way, this is, the, this is a culmination because we have designed this call during this, as we've done this series. Yeah. And so it's all, it has all built to this. And this is a, uh, we're gonna talk about some strategies for submitting and, and one particular upcoming call, but also uh, what's gonna be happening in the spring as well. And again, let's see, I'm Douglas Jackson. I'm William Penn. And <laughs> Jane, Jane, who are you? <laughs> this is great. And, and Jane, yeah. who are you? You get to introduce yourself. Jane Gabrielle. Artist and musician, Goddard College student, and um, citizen of nice our own. And you had a testimony over here. He said, a nice person. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. And thanks, uh, thanks for being with us tonight, Jane. And again, we're doing this series, and we're going to be doing um, a series probably each spring and each fall for the next, next couple of years. And um, we're doing it to build a stronger artist network, to create more opportunities for local artists, to get, uh, to put out more successful calls uh, and to involve more artists. And then to more, most importantly, engage, engage artists and let artists shape this program. Um, you know, there's some of the best things we, we do or will do will come from the artists. Yeah. And, Again, everything's built to this, and we are going to talk tonight about reimagining Roanoke. And that's going to be, a, and you know what? I have to say a, a statement that Jane made kind of you know, really even helped us shape this title. Um, it's fund, fundamental to this. Yeah. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more. Reimagining Roanoke is the name of the temporary art call. Um, we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about the Spring Artist Series briefly, the Melrose Bus Shelters Project that's coming up in the spring, uh, Art in Place Project, and then just the role of artists as spark plugs. And we um, we'll talk a little bit about what a spark, what the job of the spark plug does. Um, and shown there in the image is the sculpture Rawrenock, which uh, is was made from wood from the, an Elmwood tree, an Elmwood Park tree, when they cut down some trees in order to, to redo, the, redo the park. We always hate losing trees, um, but I guess that, was that one was necessary to go and it was an older tree and um, an artist used some wood and uh, reinterpreted that tree uh, for one of our temporary calls. And, so the, this exhibit will run from May 17th, 2021 to April 14th, 2023. So two years. Yeah. And William, how many pieces are we gonna get? Uh, we should have at least 16. Well, eight, 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 yeah. eight, yeah, eight, eight, eight pieces. I mean, eight pieces of time. We've got money for, for eight pieces and we're gonna pay up to $4,000 per work if we, um, you know, it could be that some artists say, you know, that who knows why we would pay less than 4,000. Mm -hmm. An artist might say, well, here, here's one and you don't really need, I don't really need it all $4,000 and we'll, we'll do more. Uh, maybe that's the case. Maybe we'll get some other organizations who want to pitch in and, and bring more art to the community. But we've got enough money set aside to get at least eight works at $4,000 each. So that's a $32,000 budget. We've got a little bit more um, for some of the other expenses with the exhibit. There'll be a two year lease uh, on each of the pieces. And then the piece will go back to the artist or it, the artist can then, you know, um, if they develop a piece for the show, uh, we rent it for two years and then they can sell it to, they can sell it to someone. Um, 
in or in some cases we have purchased uh, pieces for our permanent collection, or they can rent it to another community and, and keep making money. Uh, in the picture is Influx by Bland Hoke and Matt Rink, and that's a, that was from 2010, and that's the decommissioned lamp poles uh, that create that work, and it is in our Vic Thomas Park. And if you Google Vic Thomas Park, this this mm -hmm. uh, this sculpture comes yes. up. Yeah, if you're if, uh, people take a lot of pictures of it. So reimagining Roanoke is really. Um, kind of a little bit of a reference to our city and how it's how it was initially imagined you know, as, a, as the magic city. And there were uh, boosters who lived here, you know, business folk who wanted to see Roanoke grow. And when the, and they lobbied hard to have two rail lines cross uh, at, this, at this site. And the city took off from that. Um, so the residents make a big, a, a big part of what makes Roanoke successful. Uh, and we talk a lot about asset-based development. Um, what, what can we do? What can any community do? How can they grow based in what they have there? Um, as opposed to saying, well, well, we don't have this, or we don't have that. What we really need is, instead of saying that, how do we look at what we do have and build, build from what we have? And that's our people. That's the, 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 eco, the ecology around us, our natural resources. Uh, it's the existing businesses that are here. It's our history, it's our heritage. And the more we value what's here and the more we build from that, the better, all, the better our outcome will be. Uh, we've got the innovation corridor now that is running along next to Elmwood Park that connects the city with Carillion Clinic and the research that's happening there. Um, and that's an, that's another, you know, people talk about Roanoke going from train city to brain city. There's neuro, neurological research happening happening there. It's a it's a changing economy, um, and but at the same time, we've got to build a con an economy that everybody is able to to benefit from, and we've got to value the contributions of everyone. So right there next to Elmwood Park is the the city library, uh, the main library, Roanoke Public Libraries. And one thing that's gone really well in recent years is, has been the efforts of Star City Reads, which is a 2830 organization collaborative that's really focused on increasing the, the reading equivalency of, of third graders. Uh, so if you can learn to read by the time you're in third grade, then you can read to learn to do anything in your lifetime. So a lot of that has been focused on feeding kids who are hungry, um, feeding programs at, in schools at, at lunchtime, at breakfast, and even dinner time. Um, and they were seeing the scores improve there. And part of that, why that's important is just, again, how are we investing in the people or in the community? How are we considering every, you know, the people who are in the community an asset? Uh, how are we building from that? and how are we becoming a more equitable community? And uh, that was the seventh All-American City Award was given to Rona based on the strength of that Star City Reads. And coming up on the comprehensive plan, the, there's a theme of interwoven equity. And the city, that the comprehensive plan the city's about to roll out uh, looking toward 2040. And so we really want to ask the question too, um, how are we becoming a different city looking toward 2040? So reimagining Roanoke, you know, is both a, a you know a constant process of how does our city fit into the world today? How does the city serve its its yeah. residents of today? To us. Hello. And hi, Tracy. Well, I think I think somebody else joined us. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And then, and um, okay. So, um, with the the question of um, equity, how are we um, how are we becoming an even better city? better serving everyone 
uh, in the community? How is it everyone's city? And that's a question when we were asked in one of the earlier sessions, we asked like, why would we do a temporary exhibit? And Jane said, well, you might, you know, we might do a temporary exhibit in order to you know, have a really current conversation or reflect on current conversations. And if we put a call out like this, um, and, I'll, and we talked a little bit about that, like the end racism now mural um, felt really powerful to the city um, because it was responsive. It was a way of and turning over the street, you know, to residents and, and saying, okay, here, you want to do this project, do the, let's, do, let's do this project. Um, that, if we were to, to do the call and not reflect on that, you know, those aspirations of our community and being an even better place and just talked about what kind of place we are now and not said what we want to be in the future, it would have felt kind of inauthentic, I think. So that is a piece of this call. And I think that's really where that word reimagining Roanoke comes from. And it's something we do together. So we're asking artists um, in this call, let's see. Okay. So we're asking artists in that call to help us reimagine Roanoke and to, to kind of play on that theme a bit. The locations for the art are gonna be largely at the Elmwood Art Walk. Um, we have eight pads there that will be available, up to eight pads, we might, yeah. have, might have seven, up to eight pads that are gonna be available there. And we're also thinking if we're a little bit flexible in this call and we have more opportunity we might be able to get some more art out in neighborhoods. We talked about how the art in Roanoke program started initially, and it was a neighborhood sculpture project, and we had art all around the city. And we'd love to get back to that a little bit. So if we can rally some partners, maybe some additional resources, or be creative in how we cite these works, uh, we can probably get some out in neighborhoods. And then once we get, a bunch of proposals and we look at the sites we have available. Um, we're gonna have some, I think the committee will have some fun looking at what work will work best where. Now, the work on this call and, now, and this image is of Polly Branch's Rigsby the Raccoon, which is made of tires and it's uh, on the, in Vic Thomas Park on the Roanoke River Greenway. And it and it is it's all it's repurposed tires, mm -hmm. and uh, that that was done as a project funded through the AFAC committee um, with the Mill Mountain Zoo and their uh, Art to Rescue the River project, mm -hmm. done in conjunction with the Clean Valley Council, and this is this popped up uh, probably put it in late this summer and it looks it's fun uh, it's right there by the bridge that links. Um, Wasina Park to Vic Thomas Park, and it's on the Vic Thomas side. Now, I keep showing these images. We've got Rigsby the Raccoon, we've had Influx, we've had that Rawanock, and all of those were made of repurposed materials. So th um, that is part of our theme for this call. And the work can be uh, something that's already been developed by an artist, or it can be something that's proposed. Uh, so we, you know, we'll take sketches, we'll take images of completed work, um, or we'll take sketches. But what's key to it is that artists are always working within constraints and they're pro solving problems within constraints and using existing resources. Uh, and we wanted to reinforce that uh, kind of concept of the artist and ask that at least 50% of the materials that are used in the sculpture be repurposed. So 50% would be repurposed materials. And then, um, I, as I said, it could be, like here we have a concept that Charlie Brower had submitted for um, the Natural City, which was in a, a temporary exhibit on the Art Walk. And um, for his, he was, he was he hadn't developed it yet, I don't believe, and submitted the sketches. So I wanted to show one of, one of his sketches and he said, sent several sketches. Um, and we are interested in the process as well of, of, the, of the art uh, in addition to the final product. 
So we say we think the, the development of the work will reflect innovative and collaborative approaches that explore new ways of looking both at those resources at hand and the processes of, of deploying them. So in the same way that we're reimagining Roanoke, um, you know, we can think of that that theme can be very literal in the, the, the project. It could also come in from the, um, the process the artist uses in creating the, the art. So what are the innovative and collaborative approaches? And those approaches could be uh, you know, new partnerships. Then material use. And this is Hill Climb by Jim Collins. And um, let's see, and we think material use will reflect the strength, resilience, imagination, aspirations, and the diverse and inclusive nature of the city and its creative cultural community. So you can say a lot with just the materials you're, you're using. The side guidelines, each pad on the art walk is six feet by six feet uh, and can hold up to 1,500 pounds. The max height for art we're thinking is 15 feet and the max width would be six feet. And then it's going to have to be anchored into, into that pad. Uh, and the bolts can, can't go any closer to the edge than six inches. Wait, don't move. Oh. Oh, okay. I can send you, I can, and you know what, soon, and this is a good, this is a, um, this is the draft RFP, the draft request for proposals. And this week, well, at the end of this week, we'll have this out uh, in, its, in its entirety. And I'll talk a little bit about where it's going to be and how folks can get it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but you know, I but I understand I'm a big note taker too, yeah. and um and sometimes I don't often I don't go back to my notes, but the fact that I'm writing it down helps me process yeah. it and remember it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see, so when on the call we're going to ask for an artist statement, and we're, we're and even more important than the artist statement, we're going to ask for a project statement that describes. Um, and well, and I think we're changing the name. I think I'm taking out the, the new life because it just is too much. Yeah. I think reimagining Roanoke is going to be enough. But the project statement will describe the response to the project, demonstrating understanding of the community and explaining how the work relates to the context and the theme of reimagining Roanoke. So we, we're really interested in that understanding of our place in, in this call. The, we're asking as well for a description of the repurposed materials, uh, the concept and sculptural images. And I think we'll have to, I think we have, are asking from three to 10 images. Um, I believe that's what we're gonna be asking for. And then, um, and one of those images needs to be an illustration of how the piece is gonna be anchored to the pad. Um, and then uh, a budget as well. So $4,000, if someone is, responding from there across the country we're going to need to know that you know you're going to be able to get it here to Roanoke uh, for that you know with that four thousand dollars that you're not only going to be able to produce the piece or have the piece but you're going to be able to get it here as well and then the applications are going to be due or the responses will be due January 18th and they'll be good. so that's uh, is that does that seem tight Jane is that close you know, probably not, um, you, you know, it, my immediate response is like what my caseload is with, with school, but, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> and, then, and, then, <laughs> and then, so there, so there's January, so here's the, the timeline. So there's January 18th, and again, we're not asking for the piece to be completed. We're asking for the concept and the images explaining the concept. Then from January 18th, you know, I, you know, if you're the optimistic artist, you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna keep working on this, you know, refining my concept even more, um, thinking about my materials and what I'm gonna to have to do, planning it out between January 18th and February 19th, um, which is the, the date we'll have artists notified. Then um, there'll be a contracting period with the notified artist um, where we're getting our, getting the, our ducks in a row in order to make that first payment. Uh, and then we're going to ask for the installation to be between May 3rd and May 17th. Uh, so there's really, so that's March, March, 
April, May. So there's three more months then to develop the, to actually develop the piece. So um, yeah, so we hope it's, we hope it's gonna be enough, yeah. enough time, yeah. But, and, and we'll get a mix. Again, I, we said that, you know, we'll get some people who say, oh, well, here's a piece that fits perfectly. I did this two years ago. Here's what I was thinking about when I did it. And it might just be a great match and it might be a completed piece. Then we'll get others who are, who are putting some thought in to it yeah. specifically, building those new partnerships, um, you know, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a mix of that. Let's see. Okay, so and I there was one more thing I was going to go back and do, and I didn't do it. Was put in a put in an image of cafe the the website. So it's call for entry, uh, and cafe is the name that everybody goes for. If you put it, type in art and and call for entry or art and cafe, you'll it'll probably be one of the first few that come up. And this is a system that that the city will will pay the fee for. It's free for artists. Artists can go in and search by the city. They can search by the kind of call and look at look at calls all around the, the country. Uh, yeah, and our call will be on there. We're going to market it here locally um, and and build partnerships and get folks to share it. Uh, but we're still going to ask everybody to go to that cafe in order to to submit. So that's the only place that people will be able to submit. Uh, but again, it's free for artists. And um, and it's a it's a pretty easy yeah. system to use. We haven't had any trouble or any complaints with it. We've done, I think, like four calls or five calls. Four. Yeah, four, four calls with it so far, and haven't had any trouble. All all over the country too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, okay, so that's that's the call. Like, are there any and are there any questions on the call? Okay. No. And and again, it might it, don't take that if you're if you're watching this later. Um, make sure you go back and you read the actual call in case we changed anything in the next two days. <laughs> but I don't. I think I think we're getting pretty. I think we're getting pretty close to it. And and Jane, it, it really did. We we really did shape this um, through our conversations in, in this series. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I we yeah, we that was an intention, though. Yeah, yeah. And, but we really appreciate you being part of it because you really helped us, you know, in, in thinking thinking through this. And it's going to keep. I think the nice part is that now that we have the structure of it, and I've talked to some people. I've talked to a gallery owner. I've talked to a couple of other people who got really excited when we said, "Hey, we're really serious about working with local artists. Help us get the word out." Um, so we've got people who are ready to to be partners. That, that way um and we're going to keep kind of yeah. thinking about how this plays out um because we can do we can do things in totally new ways and um you know each if we have a bunch of local artists who are doing the installation you know the installation of the piece might be a big celebration each individual piece you know or like a where, where the other artists go down and watch them install or whatnot support each other who knows what we can do with this. And then uh, I said that we're going to keep doing these sessions. Uh, this fall was focused uh, by the collections committee and focused on this uh, temporary exhibit. In the spring, we're going to hand over this series to the, and I think you, I think, I think we're using the, an outdated term, but the placemaking committee. So Jane, if there, there might be another term we need, we need for that. If I if I heard you right, <laughs> talking about the the session you just heard, right? But, but yeah, yeah. So, so the placemaking committee, um, which is going to be sponsoring a, uh, a a series, we're hoping to do it in person. Uh, we're hoping to do it in partnership with the Taubman Museum of Art. I don't know if we'll be able to do it in person or not, but um, we are working, hoping to work with Springboard for the Arts with their handbook for artists working in community. I'm with, familiar. Yeah, yeah. So we're 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 you know really looking at the values that we you know use and draw upon when facilitating communities when they're developing their projects, uh, the different kinds of roles an artist can play, and uh, I think it will be a really key um, 
step in us building a network of artists who are doing this kind of work in the, in the community, um, kind of collective of, of artists all thinking in similar ways, using similar language would be really helpful, I think. And um, if anybody wants to get that, go ahead and get that um, handbook. I'm gonna see if I get some printed copies, but it's available online as a PDF and you just um, go to Springboard for the Arts or Google uh, Artists Working in Community and it comes up pretty quickly as well. It's so funny because this, this handbook lives on my computer and my iPad and my, my radical service area of study is written with through the lens of this of this handbook. Excellent, excellent. Wow. Well, like, like I'm saying, I think the time I think the time is right. Yeah. I know it's so cool. It's so cool at Roanoke's on the edge, man. I'm just I'm loving it. Well, it, Lo and and we'll, we'll get there with committed, you know, folks ready to dig in and explore and learn together. That's that's where we'll really be hitting it. I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's the Spring Artist Series. We've also got a, a call we're, we're hoping to put out. Um, we're working with the Melrose Orange Target Area where they've done some streetscape improvement. There are going to be four bus shelters that are going in, and we're going to be using the standard um, Valley Metro bus shelter. But given that it's a standard bus shelter, um, what can we change to make it to tailor it to the community? We can change color. Maybe we can change perforation pattern on those screens. We can do maybe treatment in the concrete below it. And so we're going to be designing a way to um, either get one artist or multiple artists to work with neighborhood teams in, um, in tailoring these bus shelters in a creative way that are going to go in on Melrose Avenue and then on 11th Street. So. Um, so stay on, stay on the lookout for that too coming up. And then um, the other part of what we're doing this year, we've got our first one we're talking about now. Um, we've got some money to put into murals. We've talked about it in one of the earlier sessions and we're doing a cost share strategy called Art in Place. And the, the city can pay for a third of the mural, the private property owner can pay for a third of it, and then the neighborhood association can pay for a third of it. And we think we can um, use a little bit of public dollars and help get, you know, murals or other art projects in private private spaces that face the public or the public can enjoy. Um, so hopefully we'll get two to three of these coming this year. But I'm showing that for for a, a reason because the artist can play a role as the spark plug on these. And I I we know it we know that's how a lot of these projects happen where the artist says hey there's a wall or hey, there's a, um, you know, a piece, a, a, a rolling door, or there's a, there's something that can happen, can take an artistic treatment or that, that really needs an artistic treatment. And they can go talk to the property owner and they can talk to the neighborhood association, you know, not just with this program, but with, with any, any program um, or any idea, the artist can be um, part of the genesis of it or even asking the question, of a property owner or a neighborhood association. Hey, what do you want to see? Um, you know, if, when you're out, when you're out and about and, and talking to folks. So I think that's part of what we'll be talking about when we're, um, you know, next spring. But at the same time, I, I always want to make sure we're we've got that open invitation to come to the Arts Commission as well with, with an idea or, or thoughts. You know, we can't do everything all at one time, but we can put things on a list and have them in our back pocket. And the time's right, or we get some other resources. Those things, those things come together um, when you know when there are good people out there trying to do good work in the community. Um, you know, we, we want to hear that. We want to hear those ideas um, and help support them. And that is it. And let me open it up just for any final questions. I just have to learn how to. Hey, hello, this is Tracy. Hey, Tracy. I'm sorry, I'm in a car, so I hope I can, uh, uh, I hope you hear me okay without too much noise. No, you yeah, sound, yeah, yeah, yeah. sound crystal clear. Okay, 
Okay. Well, I enjoyed your presentation. I will definitely uh, be looking for the uh, calls to artists. Um, uh, and I had one quick question about the recycled materials project. Sure. Yeah. Does it matter where the recycled materials come from, as in the area or Roanoke, or does it matter? No, no. It's a matter of fact. We, you know, if, if we're, if we're going to have someone who's well, I guess it could, it could work either way. Um, okay. if, somebody, if somebody's an artist and you're working in another state and you want to submit and you can just tell, you can tell us about those, about the materials. Um, All right. It, so while the material didn't come from the community, we still right. want to tell the, the, the art to reflect that, you know, Roanoke story. Oh, sure, sure, exactly. Okay. That All right, well, thank you. Oh, yeah. No, okay. Problem at all. Thank you. It was good, good hearing you again, Tracy. Oh, thank you. It's good to be back. <laughs> so, but I will be um, watching out for the artist calls. So, terrific. I would like to be involved in something this year. So, great, great. Well, we'll, we'll look forward to, to seeing it. And we're okay. gonna we're gonna send the artist call out to everybody who registered. We'll send it out on our full um, Roanoke Arts Commission newsletter. It will be posted on the city's purchasing website. They'll per they'll post it on their procurement uh, system. We'll have it on our website, and it'll be on ca Cafe. Additionally, we're going to work with partners and ask them to promote it and, and send it out. All right. Well. Excellent. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks. Do you think we've missed anything in this? Presentation? Have, you have, mean have, the series? Yeah. The, 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 the whole series, yeah. Yeah. You know, the only thing, it's been eye opening. It's made me braver, you know, because you have no idea how many times I've sketched stuff for calls for art. And then I'm like, well, it's not done enough. You know what I mean? And, and I just, that you totally changed my perception of that. And I appreciate that very much. I'd like to be informed of like maybe tubes or somebody that does a, does these murals a little bit about mural work, about enlarging your sketch to a wall. You know, I, I'd, I'd like to know more about that. Oh yeah, that would be, that. I'd be really interested in, in, in that yeah. as well. Terrific. Yeah, well, um, we'll have to figure out the best way to, best way to do that. It might be that we well, we haven't designed that 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 spring series yet. It might be that we could um, weave in some like um, lessons from the field kind of thing. Like that like, would be cool. Yeah, which would be and, and that's that's what we we lose a little bit. You know, it was cool. It's, like it's cool seeing you in your space now. And I saw some art when you like when you. When, when you first lo logged on, what's with you? Yeah, right yeah. there behind you. Yeah. Um, uh, when we've done these in the past, you know, we've always, we've had some, we've been like organized some sharing and when you have people in a room together and they're kind of willing to talk about their, their work, uh, that's going to be really important for, for this, um, this kind of ongoing, ongoing networking and, and building a collective of artists. Yeah. But, um, yeah, what is that behind you? That's just a sketch I did of uh, Heather Heyer, you know, the woman that was killed in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. And it just says, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, any anything else? So we'll and we'll so we'll explore that with the yeah. with the mural with the mural in particular. And it might be. We might, we might find an opportunity to do that related to a specific project too, which would be a cool way to do it. That would be, be cool. I mean, I've done, I did an artist in residency for a, a school in, in Richmond years ago where they wanted to decorate the classrooms. And rather than paint the walls, I, um, I did an installation of indoor, used indoor, uh, indoor doors, you know, actual door panels, you know, and paint on there and then install them in the school. And uh, it was easier to do it, you know, <laughs> this way than I, I imagine doing it that way. But I 
I've never really done anything large, large scale like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just talked to a, an artist in Christiansburg and he's trying to get bigger and bigger. His goal is just to keep getting on bigger and bigger walls. And if he gets access to larger wall, he gets really excited. Um, <laughs> he's just gone through that process and like st stepping it up. Um, I bet he'd be willing to talk about that, about that too. He, yeah, he's been doing uh, it around Southwest Virginia. Yeah. An interesting thing I did, I, I think I told you I was gonna do a, a riff off of Ann Glover's uh, dog to, uh, you know, over at Melrose Rugby Forum yeah. National Night Out, and I did. And uh, it was really cool because we had a story behind the dog. And, you know, Estelle McCadden, she told everybody the story. You recognize that dog? You know who that dog is? <laughs> and uh, it really had a cool conversation going. And I did a paper on it and submitted it as part of my work packet at school. And they were really taken with how that dog defines that neighborhood mm -hmm. yeah. and that such an opening for work that defines other neighborhoods you know and i thought that was an interesting comment yeah yeah and i did and i i hear, I hear there was a lot of engagement with the with the dog and the chalk yeah. There was the cops came and, and did doodles and stuff. It was really, really something else. We needed. Did you get send you pictures? Did you get them? No. Did you send them? I sent you pictures. Oh no, I haven't seen them. I've been okay. Yeah. I will send them. Yeah, I I wonder if I, if um yeah I I, I was going to say follow up with me in some way. I want to make sure I I I, I do get them. Uh, I was going to say. If you have my phone number, you can text me. You know, you can text them as well. But is it the number on your card, or is it a secret number? No, it's a secret number. I'll get you one that has that's a cell phone number. Yeah. Why don't you email it to me so we don't have it on here? <laughs> oh, everybody, email me pictures. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll follow up with you on that. I'll send you my. I'll send you my. Okay. Cell phone. Okay. Yeah. All right, hey, Jane. This is Tracy. Yeah. If you yes. have any uh, questions on murals, just let me know. I've done a couple. So. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. On enlarging stuff. Yeah, the first mural I did was um, 17 feet by 70 inches tall. So it was quite a uh, big and large endeavor. But uh, yeah, I mean, I might be able to answer some questions too. So. Excellent. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, and then I, Tracy, I know you're driving. Can I just pass along your information to Jane? Oh, feel free to, exactly. Sure, no problem. Great, great. I'll do that. That'd be great. Yeah. Sure, well, I'll help out any way I can. All right. But yeah, I would, I would love to be able to, um, to uh, uh, I love doing murals. So if I could, you know, be involved in something like that, that would be awesome. But we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'll well I'll connect the two of you and Jane. I'll send you my 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 number so you can send send some of those images. And if you're okay with it, I might include them in a newsletter that goes out. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. With that, is there anything else we need to hit on before we wrap up? Well, I want to thank William. I want to thank William Penn. It's so much more fun with William Penn here. It's, it's lonely. Wow. It's, it's, lonely. <laughs> it's lonely when you're not here. He's, yeah. he's like that. The best parties I've ever been to is always when William Penn's there. It's magic. <laughs> Tracy, don't take that to heart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right. But I thank you all for joining us. I really appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you for the information. I always enjoy it. All right. Thank okay. you all. Be safe. Okay. Thank you. Stop recording.